I think the real story is your neighbour. You sound like you've got a walking, talking fortune cookie living next door to you, telling oh. you to be the crusher. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she just lost her husband. And I love these two. They're, my, they're some of my favourite neighbours. Um, we would do these old school workouts in my front yard and him and his wife would come out and they would cheer and or 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 he would come out russ would come out and say what's all the heckling what are you guys doing are you rioting out here and he's like just kidding you know and he, um but he had, he passed away and so we go and visit and uh hang out and she was like you know you're such a nice guy and you help out so much and i just don't get how you step in there and, and fight people and uh you know, we got into this conversation. I was like, yeah, I'm just, I get to be mean 15 minutes at a time. And, uh, but it's like not mean enough, you know? And it's like 10 years ago or eight years ago, like I was the crush. I was able to sw flip that switch, get those submissions in the second and third round, like crush dude souls and I could fill them quit. And then I knew I had them. And it's like, uh, I started matching and I would match the guys, no matter if they were, the Robert Whitakers or, you know, somebody who was new coming in that maybe had 10 straight wins or something. Um, and she said, well, maybe you need to bring out that stage character, the crusher, you know? And uh, I just kind of was like, said a, little, said a little prayer before I went out there and I was like, let me switch into that guy that's mean, that's coming out to hurt this guy. Um, and I did it, you know, it's a, I got close to finishing that arm triangle and I felt it slipping a little bit. I tried to readjust. And then after that, he came out really hard. Cause I, you know, it's like you hit a hard submission. Sometimes you fatigue your shoulders or whatever, you know, and it's like you lose a little bit of momentum and they come back hard and he did. And I felt that slipping and then that stage character came out and it was just like, hey, let's just keep on going. Um, the shots were there. Uh, I was able to finish my shots, get him to the ground. Uh, keep safe. He was trying to swivel for the arm lock and the triangle, um, and I kept good, you know, not let too much up. But still land some elbows to cut him up and hit him a little bit. So I just, uh, I feel great. What was your neighbor's name? Mariana Heard. Shout out, Mariana. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna love that. Yeah. Do you think? Does she watch your fights? Does she always tune in? Yeah, she has off and on. I think. Maybe she gets it from my neighbor, Brett, and then he kind of gives her the play-by-play, -play. but she might have been watching this time. Cool. I don't think she likes the, the, you know, it's a little, a little rough. Getting in, it's a fight. Yeah. She's like a 70-year-old lady, right? Yeah. yeah. Probably not the demographic. For the yeah. I don't know, man. There's a few out there. <laughs> so do you think that's something you're going to take forward with you now in your career, the, the, the ability to be able to switch that switch? I think I have to. Um, I have to, it worked, um, cause I would get in the flow of things, you know, and I, and I've had such great partners and great coaching and great teammates. Um, and my life is really fulfilling and really good. You know, I have a great relationship with my two older boys and my newest baby boy and me and my wife are very happy. Um, life is busy. I've been speaking quite a bit. Um, and I just, you know, it's like I had to find whatever that was that motivated me to become the crusher. And uh, it came back in today, it came back in tonight, and, and uh, it worked. And I'm going to carry that on to the next one and the next one. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Sometimes you, you almost feel like it sounds like life outside of fighting, everything is going good. It, it, it's almost tough to keep, I guess, touch with that savage side of things that you almost need to be able to go in. Do you feel that, um, <clears throat> is this something that you were maybe in touch with maybe earlier on in your career when life maybe wasn't, I, want, I don't want to say cozy or comfortable, do you feel like you maybe had that access to it a little bit easier back when life was simpler? No, because it was the only option, you know, it's like uh, I had the overdose death, you know, it was like rebuilding, becoming a productive member of society. And then on the outside of that was like, oh, by the way, you want to be a professional MMA fighter. And, you know, people, I mean, 15 years ago were like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Um, and I knew inside since, uh, you know, I was a sophomore, a freshman in high school and Forrest Griffin uh, and Stephen Bonner 
you know, uh, had that first finale, season finale, and I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but that savagery that, that led me into the Ultimate Fighter season seven house and getting cut and then going, or not getting cut, but not making it, and then coming into the season 11, and then it's like, that's all I had. And um, once I made it into the UFC, it was like, uh, I realized that you did, you, once you make it, you didn't make anything. You just barely got there, and now you gotta fight tooth and nail to stay. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, I started thinking like, well, what's next if something bad happens? What if I blow something out and I'm out, out? Or what if I lose a couple of matches in devastating fashion and, hey, you know, it's on to the next thing. And so it's hard to stay focused on just that one thing, especially when I have uh, children, you know, that rely on me. And, um, um, you know, and all it takes is a couple of nasty knockouts, dude, and you're, uh, and everything changes. Um, and so sometimes I just had a hard time with that hey man, it's got to be all or nothing. And I don't care what anybody says. I know in my experience, like, this is my primary source of income. And so I have to focus almost all my energy on this. And I would have a little bit of energy for the speaking and a little bit of energy for this. And, oh man, uh, what am I going to do next? And sometimes um, it leads you away from that goal of becoming that savage in the fight. Um, but I was able to bring it out tonight. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know, maybe it was a mixture of that. Maybe it was a mix, mixture of, of desperation. Maybe it was a, hey man, it's all or nothing now. Um, but man, it felt good. Do you feel like you're, I mean, I know when we look a lot of times people say, oh, I'm on three losses. You know, that's, you know, my back's against the wall, but this is three losses over a long, a decent period of time going back into 2009, uh, 2019 with some of the other ones, but did you go in there feeling that your back was against the wall, even though you haven't been in there as as much as 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 a as not right? against the wall? It was more a fight in in my own head. Gotcha. Um, because I know how well I do against some of the top competitors in the world, you know, and like uh, um, training partners, you know, and uh, I still felt like I outwork almost everybody in the room. And I know inside how, how good I can do. Um, but knowing that and then doing that is two different things. Because uh, it's different when you're in there. It's different when it's just you and it's just him. Um, and bringing that out uh, is a challenge in itself. I mean, ask anybody if they're honest with themselves. You know, it's like sometimes they'll have specta like spectacular practices but yeah, putting it together in the in the octagon is a little bit different and it's like how do you bring that out um, and that's that's a process you know it's like I think I've had 50 over 50 rounds you know at the highest level in the world and it's like not all of those rounds have been excellent some of them have been a fight some of them have been um, but man I felt good today so what do you think is the, the key to, to kind of keep going forward? Because I know you're trying to balance with speaking engagements and you're trying to, you have the family as well. What, what's, the, what's the right amount of fights to keep you at that level, do you think? What sort of, you know, we're talking two fights a year. We're talking three fights a year. Yeah, like two or three fights a year. Because then it's like I can really focus and I can come out. And it's like I'm, th I'm 36, but I, I feel better and, and stronger and like in a rhythm more so than like, you know, my early 30s or my late 20s. Like, and I feel like, uh, I feel like tonight when I walked in there, I was in there for the right reason, you know? And sometimes it's like, I had all this extra pressure or um, uh, on myself, not anything like family wise, or I just wanna, I wanted to, it's like I don't have anything to prove to anybody, but to myself, I want to I want to show that I have the ability to compete with the best guys in the world, and I know I do. But just you know, it's like, man, it felt so good tonight coming out and 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 feeling the way I did. Like I feel like I did when I was 26, 27 years old. 
I imagine that's the kind of feeling that can kind of reinvigorate and want you to keep going and going and going. So what is sort of the end goal? Is it about just keeping maintaining good performances where you're happy with your performance out there? Or is the, the, the dream still like, I think I can get back to a point where I can try to good go Good performances it. and just elevating that a little bit at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And just crawling, because I know I have it. I know I can be a champion inside. Um, and so, you know, baby steps, but all progress from here. And lastly, for me, I know you've, you've been very vocal in the past with uh, overcoming using drugs and alcohol and all that sort of thing. So how is because I know people look at you as a beacon to what they can try to strive to be, to try to get rid of things. Um, how has that been going? And is there anything you maybe want to let us know of initiatives that you're trying to do? Any, anything forward of what you're trying to do out there in that aspect? So that's my why. Why do you do this? Um, and it's to carry the message to people who are struggling out there that, that, that we can overcome adversity. A, p a person in long-term recovery can a a achieve incredible things one day at a time without a drink or a drug. And that's my, that's my why. Um, I started the McGee Project. I speak, I help k get kids into gyms. Um, it's helping them, you know, separate themselves from substance abuse, from all the different distractions, giving them uh, mixed martial arts to focus on. And then, uh, you know, the ability to, to do what I did when I first got sober a little bit of practice um, and give me some goals to achieve uh, so that I could keep overcoming those small adversities when I was first getting sober. And then lastly, I guess to follow up with that, if you can give an address of where people can go get more info and I guess part of that, is that just as important or, or more important than a title when you're, you're dealing with real life stuff like that? If you make an impact in something, is that more important than uh, becoming they're, a champion? They're equal. I mean, I come out and become a champion that's more highlight on the McGee Project and carrying that message. Um, the McGeeProject.org, like you can check out the engagements, you can see, you know, the kids that were getting into the gyms, the people that were helping, uh, the engagements that we're booking and speaking at, but they work hand in hand. You know, it's my driving force to show up and be the best Court McGee in the octagon like tonight. Um, it's my, my driving force and, and it's a legacy that, uh, my kid, you know, it's like I have become the professional athlete that I think my kid should look up to. Uh, and that's, that's a very comforting feeling. That's awesome. Thank you for that work. Thank you.